Hello and thank you for watching. This is 101 on Plus TV Africa. My name is Elsie Godwin. On this episode, we are one-on-one -on -one with a businessman, a youth empowerment and entrepreneurship coach, the convener of Think Kishon Conference, the chairman of Ubon King Foundation, and the group chairman of Protection Plus Services Limited, Ubon Thomas King. Hello, Mr. King. How are you doing, Elsie? I'm fine, thank you. How are you, too? I'm fine. Okay, so me. I mean, you are a motivational speaker and you've helped build a lot of people. So I would like to start with this question. Do you think being an entrepreneur is something that can be learned or it's an innate capacity? Entrepreneurship can be learned and uh, it's supposed to be learned. Every child that was born with, was only born with two things, mm -hmm. fear of loud noise and fear of falling. Mm -hmm. So everything that anybody has achieved today, they learn. So entrepreneurship is something that is necessary to be learned okay so a quick search about you online would say you're 48 years old and then to say you're a billionaire right <laughs> and that you ventured into security 21 years ago now i want to tell us about that journey what has mm. it been like well okay i think um let's let's not say leave the billionaire part <laughs> i don't know where people keep saying that are you not uh, a billionaire um somebody that i pay my bills okay okay i pay my bills and um I lost my father at the age of 13, mm -hmm. and my father was my friend. Um, my mom used to heckle at me a lot, you know, and I used to think that because I was dark skin and she was light skin, that maybe I was a factory reject because I'm the first son. Mm. So when my father died, we found out I had a second wife with four children. So my mom had five. My mom didn't go to secondary school. I mean, just secondary school. She didn't go to university. So there was this competition in the house that you must be better than this other one's children. You must be better than this other one's children. So that kind of competition raised a lot of internal fights in the house. Mm -hmm. So the only thing my father had at the time of his death was just a 504 brown in color, registration number LA3069. You MC. still remember? Yes. Mm. So we sold the car for 11,000 naira. They gave my mom 6,000, gave my stepmom 5,000, and they said to your tent to Israel. Now at that time, we were living in a three bedroom house, and then we had to move in from a three bedroom to a face me, I slap you house, where we had four other families. And the restroom was a latrine. I've never been moved to such a life before. So it was strange for me. So every night I used to cry and my mom continued to do that. So all my life I wanted to be able to go, become a soldier, then revenge my father's death. You know, we watch a lot of Chinese films. Mm -hmm. So you know you kill my father, I have to kill you back. Ah! So that was my plan. But so, the plan wasn't to kill anyone though. No, my plan was actually to kill the man. But unfortunately by the time I grew, the man died. Wow. So I didn't have okay. time. So that interest of security came in because I didn't want to see somebody lose their family or lose anything. That was where my interest for security. Mm -hmm. So I finished secondary school, which was um, secondary school, which was interesting. I came up, I didn't do well in English, it affected my going to university. So I did a uh, university, um, dropped out from Uniben in my first year, decided I didn't have English um, in Lagos State University because of English, then I went to Unical. So I was moved from agri economics to agri education. Mm -hmm. Now, so my mom got to here and disowned me that I was a failure to the whole house. So with that, it became a very interesting challenge for me. So for me to survive, mm. I had to squat in somebody's house in Onikewaya and also stay there and work in the shop. Mm. So three months I'll be there. On the fourth month, I'll get back to school with any money I have. So that affected my grades in school. I came out of Unikewaya with a third class, extra year. And it was a challenge. I didn't go for NYC. So that affected me. So what happened was that for me to survive, I needed to be a security officer mm. because that's all I knew. So yeah. I was a security officer in the church for three years. Yeah, and that's, that takes me to my next question, which yeah. is about volunteering. I mean, your story says you did that job mm. at no pay mm. for three years. Yes. Why did you do it first? Why, why, how were you surviving for that three years? And I was why did you carry in a friend's house. Okay. And then if they needed to go and eat in their mom's place, I'll follow them. Mm -hmm. And in church there, you say, I just had to prove to myself I could do something. Mm. that I could contribute to somebody's success. So would you say you were battling self-esteem or being at that place no, at I the was, time was, I, I was just what you could do? I was not battling self-esteem. Okay. What I was doing was that I could contribute to something. Okay. Yes, I could contribute. I, I knew this was wrong. And I could stand in the gap to say, please pass here instead of 
park your car here. You know, this is okay so that other people can pass. If people want to go, please fall in line this way. I volunteered myself to be of service. Yeah, so, so I, I would also like to know how you turn that into business. But before that, let's quickly touch on volunteering, like I said. Yeah. What do you think is the role of volunteering for a young person hoping to have a, a good career? Volunteering helps you to build access, build skills. It is the, it's the easiest way of training. And sometimes you even get paid for volunteering. volunteering. Yeah. So if you volunteer, one, you get access to whoever is doing the, and the team of people that are volunteering. And if you do well, you could even have land a job or someone, something better. Number two, you develop experience. You know, you're able to go to new places, meet new people. You're able to learn a skill on the job based on whatever you're supposed to do. So those are the first and most important things that happen in volunteering. Mm -hmm. And then you develop yourself as you do volunteering. Mm. So for me, in volunteering, I was exposed to a lot of people, a lot of things. And when people know you are doing something for free, they want to actually reach out to you mm. the more. Yeah. Okay, so definitely you encourage anyone to volunteer I, I, more. I, I even expect that it should be part of what we should teach our children. The process. Okay, so how were you able to move from, transition from three years of doing something without pay and now making income from it? I mean, in a big way. Exactly. I, I think, first of all, the hunger is the gift of God to man. Mm. When you get hungry, you look for food. That's always my greatest motivation. When you get hungry, you look for food. Now, while working in church, one of those days, my pastor says that they don't need the security team anymore. However, because of what I was doing was good, he said, look, King, when we need service for security, we will now give you a contract mm -hmm. to provide the service and we'll pay you for it. Okay. So that was how I got my first pay. Then I had another church that said, please come and train my people in Calabar. And I went there and the man gave me 30,000 there for training his people for five days. 30,000. I was in bliss. So I knew I could make money from it. What year was this? To put Ooh. the 30,000 in perspective for those who don't understand the bliss. Yeah. Um, that, that should be in um, um, nine, 2000, no, 1999. Hmm. 1999. Uh, that was when. Okay. Yeah. So in telling the story, I mean, I really want us to get out the lessons for yeah. people that are watching. So when you got these opportunities, yes. did you have any issues in transitioning and managing the business as it grew? And how did you handle them? Okay, when he gave me the money, mm -hmm. yeah, it was money that, look, you did some work for me and I paid you. That was not business. Okay. That was not business. The business came in when I started reading magazines. And those magazines, I saw somebody give me a security and safety magazine. And I read it. it the address of it was somewhere in um, a Butemeta. And I now read it back to back. I began to see companies like corporate guards who wore uniform and posted guards and they charged people for money. So I now said, look, I see that many people have houses they are looking for security. I can as well kit up guards and put them. I didn't know we needed a license. I just thought, okay, I had a lot of young boys who, you know, took me as somebody that could lead them mm -hmm. in security. So I said, okay, no problem. So I will post you to this house. You wear black jeans, black shoes, mm -hmm. and then you wear a t-shirt. Then you now write, guard it. My first company was called guard it. It didn't even last mm -hmm. six months, mm -hmm. you know. But when they gave me 5,000 naira, I gave them 3,000 naira. I kept 2,000 naira. Now, because I had 2,000 naira profit of it, I now did multiple. So if I had 10 guards, I would now have 20 thousand naira as my own profit and I paid them three thousand. So for me that was the beginning of business. Okay. We would like to definitely know more but let's go on a very quick break and when we come back we'll carry on this interesting conversation. Welcome back. This is the 101 on Plus TV Africa. So before we went on that quick break, um, you were talking about how you were able to turn the opportunities to proper business. We started from you reading a magazine yeah. that opened your eyes to what yes. could be done. So um, please carry on. So from in there. this magazine, written by um, a company called um, um, Security and Safety Magazine, so I now decided that I wanted back editions. I wanted more mm -hmm. because what I was saying there was interesting. So I came to Lagos mm -hmm. from Ibom, and I went to a, a Butemeta and I bought 10 back editions. Now, because I was buying back editions, it got the interest of the owner of the company. So he now called me and I said, look, I'm from Ibom. I want to know more about security. So he gave me some extra. I went back to Ibom. I read that 
book as if my life depended on it. Mm -hmm. I marked every single point. And I did it over and over. So the lessons I learned were what I was practicing. So I always tell people that whatever you learn, first practice. Because the result of hard work is more work. Mm -hmm. When you get something right, more opportunities come. So as I was doing it, people were getting more interested in it. And then when I was talking to the chairman, the man that owned the company, he said, please come back. Mm -hmm. Come to Lagos. I'm looking for somebody that I can work with. So I resumed in Lagos as his PA, in the company called Pi Security Services. And my salary was 5,000 naira. So I worked there and I was staying in my mother's house. I didn't have a house. Now this gentleman taught me the passion of the work. And this passion that I will, I will resume in the morning and I'll finish then he'll take people, he was working for some high brands, they will escort them to the airport. So I got to know that there was another part of security called protocol services and escorts. So then in the evening, and I'll follow him till 11 at night. Mm. So that began to affect me. Then he says, King, your interest is in VIP protection. Go and focus more on this. Mm. So I now started studying things on executive protection, understanding, not just being a, you know, carrying a gun or something like that, which police do. They have things that must be in place. So I began to learn all the practice of executive protection. Then he seconded me to somebody to be the executive protection specialist for the person. And because I was good, and I was so interested. You see, the passion in anything is critical. What but makes a person good in, secure, in a security job? It's passion. First of all, passion, mm. hunger, and ready to learn. If you are not ready to learn and pay the price for it, you are not going anywhere. In any field, not apart from security. Mm -hmm. Because there are things that will demotivate you. The improve, the increase comes when the pain starts. Mm -hmm. Yes, so I always tell people, your muscles get built when the pain starts. Because normally I should close by 5 p.m. But if they tell me, look, this man is going out by 6 p.m. And he's not coming back till 1 a.m. You have to follow. Who cares whether your shoes are hurting you? Who cares whether your shirt is dirty? You have to find a way to wash your shirt. Mm -hmm. And then dry it up and squeeze it on that towel and come back. So from there, I began to... You know, no more. And when you are good, people are looking at you. Mm -hmm. Then they give you more opportunities. So I worked there, moved into another company called Alarm Center. Alarm Center taught me technology of security. Then from there, I moved into Halogen. Halogen taught me the business. Mm -hmm. Then Excel taught me corporate governance. When I put these four systems together, I said I might as well start my own company. Mm -hmm. Nothing starts until you start. So I yeah, I like that you're giving practical steps because yeah. when it comes to motivational speakers, it seems like the the advice or what they say to you can be sometimes impractical for some people. Yeah, <laughs> and of course they have they've had their own fair share of Twitter bans of mm -hmm. saying they just tell you to perspire to perspire. I, I'm sure you you know. <laughs> yeah. So um how important would you say motivational speaking is in building up a person a, or preparing a person for the career they've chosen? For anybody, everybody, even the president needs to be motivated every morning. Because every day you wake up, treat life as a fight. Mm -hmm. You can't drive a car without starting it. Mm -hmm. So you need to start yourself up. That start gives you the push, gives you the energy. If you see people that even go for boxing, they need to cycle them up. This is what's going to happen. You're going to be the champion. You're going to be the way. So that person sets him up because you are going to get beaten. You are going to get blue. So life will beat the living daylight out of you. If you don't get motivated, mm -hmm. if you don't get, you will not be able to take the heat that is coming because when the first punch comes on you, you will retire. So what motivation has uh, motivational speaking does it, it starts you up it gives you the buffer to take what is coming mm -hmm. so you have that energy because if you are not started whatever comes against you will rain you down mm -hmm. yeah. so as a sought after motivational mm. speaker yeah definitely you mm. speak globally mm. um what would you say makes one a motivational speaker i believe that you need to find your your message okay find your target and concentrate them my target is for people between the age of 20 and 45 mm -hmm. because I consider them as an endangered group. And then one of the things that I decide to do is to ensure that I look for the, I look for to teach them entrepreneurship. I don't really like to talk to employees. I talk to entrepreneurs because a lot of us have too many excuses. So if you tell me there's an excuse, I'll tell you a counter because nothing starts until you start. When you take the first step, it will show. You, you get to the next level. If you start giving yourself excuses, you don't have the money, you don't have the height, you don't have the color, you don't have this, you don't have... There are so many excuses. But once you say, okay, let's get it done, do it badly until you get it. Mm. Just start. When you start, look for who will help you out, who will move to the next level, who will... Know. And a lot of people always ask the wrong question. The question they always ask, which is wrong, is how do I do it? That's not the question. 
The real question is who can help me? So that is what you need to find. Who do I need to help me advise me on this track or get me to this place and call? Connect the dots. And then by the time you move on, you have moved one step further, one step further. By the time you know, you have left a long way. Now, remember you said something which I was laughing at you. I did not know that I was pay, uh, that I had crossed a certain threshold. It was my sister-in-law who told me her friend said that Mr. King is, is, you know, is successful. So it was at that time I realized, oh, school fees that they used to give me a letter for no, in school, I was paying it. House rent, I was sorting it out. Car bills, I was sorting it out. Staff salary, I was sorting it out. I didn't have those problems anymore. Why? Because I was on a mission. Mm. A man with a mission is a madman until the vision comes to pass. It's interesting you say that you don't pay attention to employees, but rather entrepreneurs. Yes. Yeah, but I've had conversations. I mean, mm. this program is about having conversations yes. with successful people. Yes. And some will tell you that um, it's also important to have someone with an entrepreneurial spirit as a staff in your organization now have having to segregate those people don't you think there will be a lacoon in the kind of people um, em entrepreneurs end up employing in the organization as well no no i did not say i don't talk to entrepreneurs uh, to employees i say my own market my own whenever i speak mm -hmm. my motivational speaking goes to young entrepreneurs okay. so i specify that i go there but if you tell me to speak to entrepreneurs there are certain laws i'll tell you because i know what they need i know how to push them i know where they need to define i know certain things because of exercise i am when you said i'm a motivational speaker i'm not i will tell you i'm more an experiential teacher so i have gone through the process i know what somebody will do i know how far they go i know where to use that person mm -hmm. and there are certain rules I have learned, good, bad, and terrible, you know, to make it work. So those are the kind of things that I do. So if I speak to an employee, I say, okay, this is what you need to achieve, how you need to get there. And then when the person gives me his counter, because I like to face the person, mm. so I have to feel what level that person is. It's when I know your response, then I know exactly what level you are. Okay, let's go for another very quick break. But when we come back, we definitely carry on. Okay, welcome back. Um, we're still having conversation with Ubon King. Now, uh, let's talk more on security. What, how would you describe the security industry in Nigeria? I think it's totally untapped. Mm -hmm. Totally untapped. If you have crime, you have opportunities. So what, what the industry needs to do is to find out what are the countermeasures and what value can they put on the countermeasures. That's security business. Mm -hmm. Because if you check the Global Competitive Index report, you see that our rating in security is quite low. Now, when the rating is quite low, people that are businessmen in different parts of the world take advantage of it. They know that, okay, look, if people with that poor crime, they can sell CCTV to you. So that problem is what creates the opportunity mm -hmm. but what we do more in this country is that we are focused on what they call guarding services so we just want guards here guards here guards here guards here but that guard will need um, okay now look at it this COVID-19 period has come out now um, what is the first thing a guard needs he needs to have a now, it has created an opportunity for somebody. Now, face masks has created, uniforms has created. So, when you take an industry, find out what can you do for the industry. Look at the scope. And that's where the industry is. There are many areas in the industry. Mm. And saying it's on tap, I mean, looking at young people as they are looking for opportunities for mm. job creation, mm. is, is there an area you encourage young people to look into and get into? Yes, there are many areas. First of all, criminals are not, are not uh, spirits, they are human beings. Mm -hmm. And then there is nothing new under the sun. Now, let's give you, in this time now, we have a lot of cyber crime. And this crime are perpetrated by young people. If young people begin to get involved in cybersecurity, mm -hmm. they'll be able to add value to businesses, to companies, and help, you know, start a new wave of, you know, counter, pirate, counter, uh, counter cyber security issues. It's a lot they can do. And mm. it's all over the world, not only here. Mm. So you speak at leadership and management retreats. I mean, yeah. you are the chairman of Ubon King Foundation yeah. and you focus more on youth development, like yeah. you rightly mentioned. Mm. Now, what have you find to be the gap in our educational system and structure when it comes to leadership in Nigeria? In simple terms, we don't tell them SWAT. SWOT means what are the strengths, the weaknesses, opportunities, and the threats. Mm -hmm. We just tell them, you know, label the part of a cockroach and then go. Now the question is, who has a cockroach helped? And I say this in simple terms, is that the education is not teaching them what we need to do. 
you teach them copy and paste from the books. Now, this copy and paste is outdated. Mm -hmm. We need to get what is needed for now and prepare them for what is needed tomorrow. Somebody sneezed in China. The economy of Nigeria is affected. So what we need to do is find out what is happening globally and begin to now internalize it in our systems. Mm. Population explosion is going out of hand. Now you have a case in 2018, there are 20,210 children that were born in one day on January 1st, 2019. There were 25,856 children that were born in January 1st. 2020, there are 26,039 um, 26, children that were born on January 1st. How many are you expecting in 2021? Now, so if you do your calculation, by the end of this year, we should have 26 million children added to our population. Mm. Now, so once you have that, you will now know that hunger will increase. Now, the, the, and I'm telling you because when we talk about this, I now tell them that my element of going into youth development is because you have these gaps that are they're like a balloon is growing, is growing. 75% of the of the country is made up of youth under 45. Now that is crazy, 135 million people. And then they say 40% of them cannot be employed because they don't have skill. That is 62.5 million people don't have skill. So if 62.5 million people don't have skill, mm -hmm. in 10 years or 20 years, what would they be doing? So that is where the challenge comes in. So what do I need to do? I now start teaching you. If you can, if you can make shoe, make the shoe. Now learn to sell it to somebody in in Port Harcourt. Learn to sell it to somebody in America. Learn to sell. It. If the person creates a business, it will employ five people. Imagine if you know you have fifty people in every local government trained times one, times four times in a year and employs five five people. You reduce crime drastically. You have to find out what are the opportunities. And that's where leadership comes in. Leadership must anticipate the problem, must be able to find out what is the possible solution and start working towards it. You don't wait for the problem to happen because if the problem happens, when it rains, it pours. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's the problem. Okay. So I, I like that you talked about unskilled um, um, yeah. set of people yeah. that we have that definitely do need the job. And so what are your thoughts on the 774,000 special public works job by federal government that you're pushing into to cushion the COVID-19? What do you think about that? Um, well, I think if we, <laughs> if we do what it is supposed to do, mm -hmm. it will help cushion something. Okay. But if we politicize it, then it will only aggravate more. Because I remember that you've had banters between the assemblies and the minister in charge. Mm -hmm. So now if it's okay, give me 30 for my people. And then this um, honorable member goes to his place and says, okay, give me 30 boys that have been loyal hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. Now because he wants to sort out his boys, it wasn't based on people that are qualified or people that really need it. Mm -hmm. So these people believe that it is their entitlement to get the job because this is my boss. So what have you done now? You have only shared the money for this thing for the period and you have not sorted a problem. So now the responsibility goes back to local government chairman and then the governors of each state. The recruitment process Not basically. even the recruitment. The thinking of solving the problem. Mm. See, solution to to crisis is not really President Wala. It's not his problem. It is the leadership at local government level. You are the one there. It's the responsibility of governors. You look at how is your state growing? What do you have in that state? How do you take it to the world? What can you do with the macroeconomics that is in that place? Look at templates from other countries and find out, okay, how is the country? Look at a country like Trinidad and Tobago. Only 1.3 million people. It's just one street in Lagos here now. But those guys, they are thinking of it. They turn drum to their national instrument. Mm. That's what they used to create a band called, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, is it uh, Sokarama? They created uniforms. They created that industry that they call um, the carnival. Does an average of $2 billion every year. It mm. has created microeconomy. So the responsibility is for us as leadership, especially at government, at state and local government, to sort the problem. If the states and the local government are sorted, we will not have a problem upstairs. Mm. Before I let you go, I mean, our time is up. In your opinion, are Nigerian youths ready for political leadership? For political leadership? Mm -hmm. We have a lot of schooling to do. We have a lot of schooling to do. It is one thing to say yes, it's another thing to do yes. So if we say yes, I'll say, look, we need to start. We, we need to just start and start running and be ready that, you know, we should be accountable to every decision that we take. Mm. Mm. 
Thank you so much for your time. We'll definitely want to have you again to speak more on other things. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you for watching. I've been speaking with Ubon King, the group chairman of Protection Plus Services Limited. To catch up on this conversation and all exclusive content, do visit our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and please do subscribe. Also, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Plus TV Africa. My name is Elsie Godwin. Please do stay safe. Thank you.